This is Pod Populi, podcast for the people. The Great Love Debate. It's the Great Love Debate. The Great Love Debate. It's the Great Love Debate. Hi again, everyone. It's Brian Howie. Welcome to The Great Love Debate, the world's number one dating and relationship podcast. Since 2015, I am here in the fine studios of Pod Populi, podcast for the people. I'm at the one in Palm Beach Gardens. I wasn't that familiar with Palm Beach Gardens before I came to Pod Populi in Palm Beach Gardens. It's very, very nice. It's a very nice slice of Florida, which is a very nice slice of Americana. I got Richard on the controls. Say hi, Richard. Hello. Good. That wasn't good. Um, (laughs) So somebody asked me the other day, is it easier to date with money? And my knee jerk reaction was, yeah, but then I had to think about, I I had to think about that in a lot of different ways. And sometimes it's easier to date when you have no money because the expectations aren't that high. Sometimes it's easier to date if you have a ton of money. Sometimes it matters how much money each of you have. I have dated uh, women who have had $20 million and that was no picnic. And I have dated women with $20 $20 and that was no picnic. So there's a lot of area in between. I was going to say gray area. There's a lot of green area to cover there. Uh, so I want to bring in a pro who knows a little bit more about these things than I do. Um, I was had the fortune of being guest on his podcast and we chopped it up with all kinds of scenarios and money things. It was really, really fun. So I had to do a little uh, quid pro podcast and have him on mine. He is a personal finance guru and a lot of other things. He knows everything there is to know about real estate. And he also knows how to navigate a relationship at different levels of prosperity. He is the host of the Where's My Money podcast, Jason Rash. How are you? Fantastic. Brian, thank you so much for having me on. Well, let me just jump in there. You've, you've uh, been in a relationship poor and you've been in a relationship uh, slightly more prosperous. There are different challenges to both. Yeah. How, do you, how do you have that conversation early on in a relationship? You're asking somebody out. You go on a date. From the very first date and over the whole arc of a relationship, from the time you say, would you like to go out with me to the time you die and they read the will, finances are always involved. Right. From where are we going? Who is paying? Oh my God, I can't believe she ordered that porter house. Yeah. Um, (laughs) To the very end, he left me this. He left it all to his fourth wife. I don't know. (laughs) Like there are so many variables in this. You know, it's easy. We talked a lot about, you know, sort of confidence to have the conversation and how to ask it, but it's always delicate, right? Right, right. I mean, it, it really depends, you know, for, for a lot of people, I think the conversation, obviously, whenever you have no money and they have no money, it's like, well, well where are we going to go? Well, then go? it's kind of sweet and you just get a blanket and a yeah, six pack. Yeah, yeah. And, 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 and that works because, I mean, you had the most precious thing because it was just time, right? But whenever you're like, you know, you're making a lot of money and, you know, you think that you think that the other person's making a lot of money. It's like, oh, well, let's go here. And it kind of gets awkward, especially if there's a large divide between the two, you know? Um, I think it's, I think it's important to, um, and I'll just, I'll just speak from my own experience. I think it's really important for people to, you know, uh, you know, I know that there's individuals out there. I'm not going to name anybody, but I know there's individuals out there that, that will try to reach up to the next social class. You Mm -hmm. know, they're not here, they're, they're here and they know they want to get here. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, again, not naming anybody in specific here, but it's, it's a situation where you have, um, you know, you, you've got people that, that money becomes a defining factor in the relationship. And, and, it, and it really is, uh, you know, and I think, you know, whenever you're younger, I had the benefit of marrying my wife at a very young age. She was 19 and I was 22. That's how we do it down South. And when mm-hmm. I mean down South, I'm not talking this far South. I'm talking Alabama. You're not south. talking Palm Beach gardens. You're talking yeah. Uh, Alabama. Yeah. We're talking Alabama. And so like, we neither one of us had any money, but we knew it, you know, I mean, we knew it, we were dead broke. I mean, Chili's with like a $6, like, like, what do you call it? The, uh, I think it was a $6 Chipotle roll up or something like that at the time. And that was, that was a meal. I mean, it was 20 bucks, but this was also 2002. Yeah. And you could go out and you could just have a blast, man, with, with a large iced tea. That's how we do it down South as well. I don't know if you guys have iced tea down here, <laughs> but eventually I've gone through all the quadrants. I've been lucky enough to go through all the quadrants with my wife, but however, I've had friends that have gotten married, they've gotten divorced and I've had to redate again, really close friends. And they're leaning on me like, Hey, listen, look, you know, she's wanting to do nice stuff. I, you know, I don't have all the money for the nice stuff. Mm-hmm. What can we do? Where can we go? And I always tell them to lean back on the, like spending quality time with each other. I mean, it, you know, yeah, sometimes the money, um, puts a bandaid over the lack of quality time. I right. have, I have done that early where the first date 
it's like, we're going to the Oscars. And then like three months in, I'm like, I can't sustain it. They're still expecting uh, you yeah, to go and to the I'm Oscars. Like, Let's just watch a movie. And they're like, well, we used to go to the Oscars. We used to take trips. We used to do this. And you sort of settle into, because you're not confident that you will be enough that you have to lead with gifts and promises and trips and all of this extra stuff because you don't trust this, the two of you. Right. And that's, you know, scary. Either on. I, 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 like I said at the beginning, uh, I dated a girl who, um, she was an actress and struggling and she was from some nowhere. She was born in the holler, as they say in, in West Virginia. The holler, yeah. And you take her to <laughs> Denny's and I was a God, Yeah, you know? And I yeah. was like, she was so appreciative of every possible thing. Then you date, you know, you move your way up or down the chain, depending on how you want to look at it. <laughs> and nothing is enough and nothing is important. And you're really just like, you know, let's just have a nice dinner and some nice conversation. And it's a little bit about where'd you go? And sometimes that's the friends yapping in their ear. Where did he take you? What right. did he buy you? What was the gift? All these kind of things. And when you take your imagination and creativity and, and the combination of the two of you out of it, and you try and surround it with financial things. Right it blurs who you are and what you want. I think a lot of people, what happens, and, and I'll, I just want to speak again from my perspective. Like, so it gets hard to be creative every now and then, you know? Yeah. And so sometimes I'd leverage the money yeah. to be able to do that cre hard creative work for me, right? So I'll go back, maybe if I just buy X, it'll just make it where I don't have to, you know, go out there and be super creative and over the moon. But I mean, at the same time, I, I totally agree with you, man. I mean, taking a girl to the Oscars all the time is not Yeah, you not can't sustain it. I mean, and a lot of times that happens. I, I, always, I, I used to make this joke on the podcast when I mostly recorded uh, out of our studio in Beverly Hills. And it wasn't really a joke. The first date was like in LA a lot, meeting, drink or whatever. Second date was let's go to the mall and buy a few things. And it's fun to try things on. And yeah. the budget for that was like $600. And then the third date was Hawaii. That was like a standard progression in Los Angeles for dating. And it was like, what? Because the guy's like, how did we well, get if here? I take her to Hawaii, then she will like me. And the guy's like, and the girl's like, well, at least I got a trip to Hawaii. And then I'm like, what are we trading in here? Exactly. Right. Like, what, what is it, it? What's the end game? I, like, I, 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 I mean, I'm not taking any woman to Hawaii that's not that I'm not going to marry. <laughs> I mean, let, let's be real. I don't want to be. I don't Hawaii is for honeymoons. Exactly. Yes. I don't. And that's where I went on my honeymoon. I don't want to be trapped on an island with a person that, that that's just like, uh, just yeah. Yeah. Like, you know, know, once all the glitz and glamour dies down, man. I, I brought up the fact that I dated this woman who had at least $20 million. I don't have. And so because she was always concerned, which is a lot of times the man is like that. She was always concerned that anybody was with her simply because she had the money. Absolutely. And she was also concerned that everybody was looking at her and been like, that guy's only with her for the money that we would go out to dinner and she would order $1,200 bottles of wine on me. I had to pay everything because she was so concerned. I couldn't afford the rich woman. Right. It was nuts. She was like so cognizant. Like I, I, I want to be completely sure you're not with me, which I wasn't. She was totally normal in her house, but out in the world she wasn't. And I don't need to spend $3,000 at like Capitol grill because <laughs> people were looking at her and right. I'm like, this is not, working. It's crazy how people's money story runs the lives of, the, of their relationship. I mean, it's, it's unbelievable. I mean, you've got your own money story. She has her own money story. And, and then when they mesh, right. And then you throw in a little couple of little people looking into the relationship from society. I yeah. mean, it can just, you know, gets out of control. So we run into that. Um, sometimes comes up at our, our live shows. It's come up on this podcast. We had, uh, the author, John Berger, on this podcast a couple of times, who talked what, what, what he really touts as sort of mixed collar relationships, because there's a lot more professional women now who are making their own money, making a lot of money sometimes, and they are dating not guys who don't have any, they're not necessarily just dating the guy in the band struggling to make it. They're dating a guy who, you know, has a trade job or a union job, and they make good money, say they make, you know, 120 grand or something, yeah. and she makes 500 grand, which is... 95% of the things, it falls into the traditional, he can pay for it or they can split it or whatever. Right. The conversation is if she wants to do something super elaborate, you know, Who's she wants to that? fly first class. And then may, then that's when she has to pay for it. But 95% of the time, it's perfectly fine. And too many women are like, I need a guy who makes at least as much or more than me. Right. And I'm like, he's not asking you to pay his electric bill. He's not asking you to pay for dinner. He pays for almost everything can't you guys work out the other 10%? I don't understand right. that. Right. I, th I think that people have to have that conversation. I mean, it starts with, a, you know, 
it, finances and relationships are a sweaty conversation for anybody. It's kind of, look, 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 I, you're going to break the bank here. It's kind of like in the position that you were in. And if you didn't step up and say something, eventually you were going to, you were going to go broke <laughs> trying, I know. trying to have this. And I think, you know, it's like the old conversation goes, man, behind every great resolution is a 15 minute sweaty conversation that nobody wants to have. Right. And they've got to have that conversation, especially if they're going to spend the, you know, if I'm dating somebody, I'm interested in this individual. I want to spend my time. My time is the most precious thing to me. And I definitely don't want to spend it feeling awkward, feeling like, oh, God, I'm hiding this thing behind her back or I, I just don't feel great about doing this. It's like, I just want to have that conversation and, like, and let's get it out in the open as quickly as possible. And a lot of times people are nervous to show, you know, some people can make a lot of money or have a lot of money and either they've got hidden debts, bad credit, gambling problem. Yeah. Alimony. There's a hundred different things that are more than here's what he does. He must, Oh, he's an attorney. He must make this. Like right. there are a lot of layers and, and, and life is filled with ups and downs. Like there are a lot of, um, uh, Ex crypto millionaires walking around now. Now they're all Uber out. drivers. They're yeah. undercover Uber drivers, <laughs> man. Let's be real. Exactly. And so you have got to be able to navigate the relationship as a couple, the ups and downs, and have honest conversations about tough things. Emergencies can come up in life, bankruptcies can happen, bad business things, bad investments. And you have to be able to go through these things, richer or poorer. That's, right. that's literally in the thing together. And you've done that. Yeah. Yeah. So I'll do, so what we did was my, when I met my wife, both of us were broke. Both of us were making like 10 bucks an hour. And just to fast forward 22 years later, we've made millions of dollars. We came from the trailer park. Literally. Um, literally the trailer park. And we had a prostitution ring across the street from us. And then we had a meth lab to the trailer next to us. It was, it wasn't until my daughter was born that I realized like, Hey, look, I got to do something about this. And my wife and I were both on the same team and we were both looking in the same direction towards the same goal. And I think that's what so many relationships miss these days. More, more people are distracted. So many people are, are they, 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 a have their own agenda, but B they're not focused. But then when he started looking towards our own goal, okay, we moved from the trailer park to a very, very small house in the middle class. And then we had other goals, but the issue was that like our personal money problems that we experienced in the trailer just compounded and got even worse whenever we moved into a normal house. House. And so like, okay, we got to fix this. And we started working on it together. It's like, we were away from the prostitution rings, but we weren't really, really better off because we were missing mortgage payments here and there. Then we started to move up in the world a little bit. We got into sales and marketing and we started going forward. And then all of a sudden we had a ton of money years later, right? We're, we're making a lot of money. And I'm like, okay, what do we do with this money? And then I told you like everybody's money story comes up, right? My wife didn't, she came from a, um, I came from like the middle class. She came from like the lower class. And so like, she was like, just going on this spending spree. Like all of a sudden, like, oh my God, $300 purses, $400 purses, $200 pairs. She was all in, the, by the way, all in the same trip at a rough trip to the mall. And so I'm just like, what are you doing? What are you doing? And then all of a sudden poof, it just came together and we had to have that money conversation. Like, this is what I expect. And this is what, let me, let me hear what you expect. Let me hear your expectations. So I had to sit down and listen to hers. And I had to give her my expectations. Like, can, can we work this out together? Cause money, money is a funny thing, man. It, it makes you it, see it, people it is. differently. And, and you know, you could be 90% of on the same page with your, whether it's somebody you're dating or somebody yeah. you're married to in a relationship with the money. And then this 10% causes it all to go bad. I think you each have to have a conversation, which is, which is actually a pretty good early dating conversation. Like what is the thing that you consider that you spend too much money on? What yeah. is your frivolous expense? And hopefully they'll be honest with you. If somebody's like, you know, I, <laughs> I Love to go to the horse track, right? Which, right. Which, 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 which for the big part of my life was me, right? Um, that's a little bit different. Or she's just like, I love shoes. That's fine too. And you, then she looks at it like, I understand that I spend money on this, right? Whether or not that's going to be a fifty-year problem, I don't know. But somebody who's willing, you know, I asked you that question, um, and you gave me an interesting answer. What do you spend too much money on? Shoes, <laughs> shoes. <laughs> I, I got like 30 something pairs of shoes, man. I, well, I'll tell you why I have bad feet. I have really bad feet. So when I find a pair of shoes that are oh, so brand for medicinal purposes, yeah, well, I, well, orthopedic, can, but yeah. you can call it. Look, I mean, look how stylish yeah. those medicinal shoes yeah, are. I right? noticed your shoes when you walked in. Yeah. I, I love them, man. But it also is my flair, right? It's, like, right. it's, it's what I love to do, but that's where I spend my money. If I'm going to spend money on anything, you know, I got a two year old phone. I got a three year old Apple watch. It's not important to me, man. And you know, you look back and it's always scary to do the math when you hit like 40 and you're like, how much money have I spent in the bars? Right. Which is you saved because you got married at 22. Correct. I don't know. Half a million dollars did I spend or have Ooh. I spent? I mean, is that if you break it down week, week, night, night, it's probably that. You were networking. It's probably a high, yeah, exactly. We'll call it that. You were, or is it an investment in my future wife? I don't know. <laughs> but you got to look at it that way. So um, I got to look at things this way. We are talking about money. So I got to take a quick break because we need money around here. I'm here with Jason Rash. We are talking about all things finances when it comes to love, dating, and relationships. And we will be back right after this.
And we are back. Is there one question that you can or should ask somebody that you're early on in a relationship to get sort of the assessment of not just where they are in their spending, but maybe their goals? So you understand, because let's say you have a big pile of money or they have a big pile of money and they need to get together and some of the funds are going to be commingled and then suddenly it's zero. Like, what happened right. to my money? It's right. Like, oh, well, we share a credit card. Yeah. Right. <laughs> and, and, you know, I, I think it's important before you ask this question, like it, it, to understand, you understand how people are whenever they they have a lot of money. Some people treat people like they're beneath them. Oh, I'm not going to do that. I'm, I'm above that. And you also understand how people are when they're running out of money. They get emotional. They get frantic. They act weird. I mean, they just act weird. Like all of a sudden, all they can think about is, oh my God, oh my God, I don't know how I'm going to make make my apartment rent this month. So people act funny whenever they don't have money. I think a great conversation is what's your goals? Like, what do you want to do with your life? You'd be amazed at how many people that I talk to and like, you know, I just, I just want to, you know, get that corner job or, or, or raise or whatever, or go to, go to Tahiti. I'm like, do you have any goals beyond that? Hadn't really thought about it. And then, so the next question that I always like to ask people is, Hey, how much money would you need to make every single month to consider yourself rich? And then some people are like, you know, 4,000, 5,000, 10,000. You know, and, and any number is fine. Number one, it doesn't need to come out of your mouth as a question. 10,000? And I'm like, I don't know. I don't know what your number is. I think so many people just never give any thought to this. And this is a great person. This is a great goal to have because if you're super ambitious mm -hmm. and your partner or the person that you want to spend your time with is not, it's going to drag you down because they're all they're going to want to do is watch Netflix on the weekend and play well, cornhole. But what if they're supportive of your ambition? Right. I'm not sure people need to be equally ambitious Correct. or need to be ambitious about the same thing. They need to have some ambition right. for something. I, I don't care what it is. You can't just be like, let me know when you get home with a pile of money. Right. Right. You know, right. I, I agree. You have to have some sort of level of, uh, I think you, I think they have to have some goal that, 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 forces them to become that better individual. They can't just be like, I want to buy a Lamborghini. I want a house. That does anything. That does nothing to change the character and the fabric of who you are. The, you know, the best couples, I think, are the ones who built something together. Like you and your wife, I think, are fortunate to have seen both sides of it. You grew together. And that wasn't just a straight path up. There no. were, I'm sure there were a lot of ups and downs, a lot of conversations, a lot of fights. Oh, yeah. And then when you both have money, then you're like, well, I like this person when I was poor. Are they still the same person? And do I like them when I'm wealthy? These are ongoing conversations. Absolutely. There's no mountaintop to this. There, right. there is no mountaintop. Um, for me, I, I would say, number one, what makes my wife in my relationship incredible is because she, she looks at me and she says, hey, listen, you're not doing enough here. So like, she'll tell me, she'll call me out on to say, listen, look, that's not really that great, man. Like, like go back in there and do it again. And, and like, she's not like, like ordering me to do it, but she knows of what my level and my capacity of greatness that I have inside of me. She knows what I'm capable of. Mm -hmm. She also knows when I'm slacking. She's like, Hey man, look, you didn't give it 110% there, man. Like, like what's going on with you? And she'll, she's kind of like, she'll kind of coach me through it and stuff. And again, we've been together like 20 something years. We're both entrepreneurs. So she knows what the, she knows what I'm capable of. And she knows the goals of what we're trying to get to as well. And I, I will say this about uh, uh, what I was going to say was you know, it's, it's the expectation that a partner has to have. They have to, I think, let's talk about money, like in, like in the mm -hmm. real sense. If you have a partner and you are not willing to tell them where they can get better in their lives, I don't think that it's true love. Like, like my wife ex wants me to see me become great. Whether or not she takes off and explodes in her own business mm -hmm. and I go and I go off and I'm the size of Oprah, she would still love me. She would not be jealous of me because she knows that I have it inside of me to do it. And I think that every partner, anybody that you're with, you have to expect some sort of something out of them and they need to expect it from you and you need to be able to have that conversation. Yeah. And you know, a lot of people, you know, misread, I think how sexy certain occupations are. You bring up entrepreneur. It's a stressful life. I've, I'm somebody who, um, I've never had a job or I've never worked for anybody. I've never had a resume. I've never had a job interview. People are like, Oh, that must be great being your own love. You know, Till you've struggled to meet payroll and and you have people obligating, you you aren't really an entrepreneur and you right. aren't really in business. You aren't really doing anything. And somebody has to be able to go along on that kind of ride with right. you. That is filled with stress. That is filled with you're never quite off the clock. That is filled with a lot of ups and downs of money. And so somebody has to have the mindset that to you can be worried and you can be stressed, but you also have to be supportive and understanding of this is the journey. And hopefully if we get there to this place together, we're going to both benefit. That's not for everyone either. No, I mean, I, I, I was talking to my wife the other day. I was like, I think I have a problem making friends. And, and she was like, what do you mean? So I started walking her through all the friends and she was like, do you know what the problem is? And I was like, what? And she said, they're employees. 
And there's nothing wrong with people who are employees. It's the fact that I just can't, whenever I'm saying, Hey, look, I'm, I'm trying to make 10 million a year. They're, Cause they're like, what are you trying to do, man? What's, 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 you know, what do you got going on? I said, I'm trying to make 10 million a year. I got a podcast that I'm launching called where's my money. I'm going to blow up YouTube. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. And they're just like, Oh my God, that sounds exhausting. I just want to go play cornhole on the weekend. <laughs> I mean, there's nothing wrong with this. It's just that I can't relate and I can't identify and I struggle, man. And I don't mean that in a bad way. Please don't ever think that. But it, it's kind of like I've got some friends of mine that are that are entrepreneurs. They're super hungry and they 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 meet a woman and, um, you know, it, everything starts going along. But then it just their ambition outpaces. It just outpaces the relationship, to mm -hmm. be very honest. It's like this person isn't growing. I think these are also interesting questions to have as a uh, as a new couple or as an old couple. Yeah. Like how much money would significantly change your life and how would it change it? Like these are sort of fun exercises. Yeah. You know, I always look at, I, I brought this up on a podcast a couple months ago. I do not want the billion dollar mega millions. I don't want it. I don't, I wouldn't feel safe with it. I'm not, I don't think I'm the right person for it. And a lot of people are like, just win it, give it to me and I will deal with it. I'll take care of it for you. I just, I'm, I'm not wired that way. But, um, you know, what, how much money do you need to get to this level of safety, happiness, excess, change your goals, change your dreams, yep. change where you live, all these kind of things. You guys probably had to incrementally be like, okay, how much do we need to get out of the trailer park? Correct. How much do we need to make our family safe? How much do we need to, all of these things. I think they're healthy conversations to have. Yeah. I think the goal, the, the goal line keeps changing because your yeah. dreams keep and changing. And then when you hit that goal, you know, um, Scooter Braun, the, the music producer, he wrote down a piece of paper when he was in college, like the amount of money that he wanted to make that was all the money in the world. And he's like, I made that in like nine months and he had to change everything. And, but he's like, the stress is, is no different. And right. it's just, everything sort of moves forward with you. Yeah. I want to, I want to expand on that real quick. So I, I date a lot. I mean, not date. I don't date anybody huh. except for my wife. Let Your me wife here? Yeah. <laughs> no. I, so I, I coach high net worth individuals. What I see across the board with these individuals is that, um, a lot of them, they appear to be high producers in their younger years. And somehow along the way, they become derailed and they become bored with life and they stop going for goals. And this permeates out through through their marriage. It permeates out through their relationships, through their, how they handle money, through their attention on their own money. This is how most, most people that are high net worth individuals get in debt. They just take their eye off the ball. But it's like anything else, right? How you do anything is how you do everything. Right. If you're going to be lax in one area of your life, guarantee you for a fact it's in your fitness. Guarantee you for a fact it's like if you consume alcohol, you're probably consuming a little bit more. Or if you're out there talking to relationships or if you're out there building businesses, you're not putting the full focus and attention on it. And this is what I've noticed. Um, it, it, and, and it permeates out through that marriages. If you're if you're listening to this right now and you're in a marriage and it used to be better than it is today, I want you to ask yourself, what were you doing back then that you're not doing now? It's a really important to ask, question to ask yourself. And I don't mean like going to Tahiti every weekend. I'm talking about the actual remove all of that, take that mask off and look at the relationship, the actual connection. What were the conversations about? What were they about? Because I can promise you that that's where the essence of the relationship is. And then it shows up in money conversations like, oh, how dare you accuse me of blah, blah, blah. And, and it's how you, when, how you do anything is how you do everything. And a lot of people, that's a really good point. The, um, are looking for somebody to date with a certain level of success because they believe that gives them a certain amount of stability. Well, caveat emptor on that, because we run into this a lot on this show and on our tour and live shows, a lot of people who were sort of these a type personalities who were go, go, go until they were 40 and focused on their career and made a lot of money. And suddenly they, they feel now that they have a sense of entitlement. I made the million where are my girls, or you think that because they have been successful in that, what really tends to happen though. And again, you can't have everything. If these people went down that path at the expense of learning the relationship and social skills that were important. And suddenly they are out there with their big bag of cash looking to date and they have not gone through the normal interpersonal relationships right. and up and downs. They're like, I didn't date till I was 42. I'm like, I'm not sure I want to date somebody like that. I want to know somebody who's been, had their heart broken and understands how to date and, and understands how to interact versus here's my bank balance. 
you should date me. And there's right. a lot of that out there. Yeah. I, I, I personally think that like it, it, so many people are craving connections these days. They think success is, is money. It's trips. It's like, we're doing this. We got businesses. I know many people that appear successful that are not successful. I mean, these are people making millions of dollars a year, but, but, but like they got two times that amount going out. I mean, it's, it's, I think if you're going to date somebody, you got to look through all of that stuff. If I, let me, let me just, let's break this down. Okay. Let's say, God forbid something happens to my wife. Okay. She's removed. And let's say she She's removed to the point of where there's no coming back. Let's say something happened, tragic accident. God forbid, she's going to kill me. Stop she, listening to the show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Brooke, stop. <laughs> Turn it off right now, Brooke. Don't listen to anything else past this point. So if, if that were the case, okay, and I had the money that we had now, and I had all the investments that we have now, I would go out into the world and I would probably downplay my lifestyle, number one. That, that would be the very first thing. The second thing I would do is I would look for a woman who's ambitious, I would look for a partner who likes to read a lot. I would look for somebody that compliments me, like maybe active, um, probably into like sports, probably not. I don't know if I'd go to the country club, but I'd probably go to the gym. That's, that's the first place I'd go is the gym. I probably wouldn't go to the bars. I'd probably go to nicer restaurants because I'd, I'd be looking for a caliber of, of woman, right? Mm-hmm. That's successful. That's ambitious. That's creative. That has vision. I'm, I'm looking for that. I don't care. You know, and if, if, if it turns out that she doesn't have like a lot of money, then I would, I would, you know, if I was to meet this individual, then I would be like, okay, what do we have in common? And what is it like whenever we don't do anything like that involves money? Let's go to the park. Let's go mm-hmm. to the beach. That's, that's how I would do it. I, w- I would take them on walks. I would do everything to not spend money because I want to go to the core essence of how this individual operates. I'd be like, what have you done? What accomplishments do you have? Like, like talk to me. Like, where are your goals? What are your well, ambitions? Because that's important to me. But there's also a chance that being around you would turn on a light bulb in them and suddenly they're... Yeah selling shoes. I mean, bro, I'm a motivated <laughs> guy, man. You can't help but get some of this magic dust on you, man. I, I know. I think you can influence people to make change in their habits, make change in their bank accounts, and yeah. make change in their perception on everything around them. Like I think about it, sometimes things change when you, depending on where you live, it is a little bit different. No offense to our friends in Alabama to date than if you dated here in Palm Beach Gardens. That's true. The expectation is different. I'm not saying it's better. I'm not saying anything is better or worse. Right. It's probably better to date in small town. No, America. no, it's not. It's, it's not. not. The, the, the gene pool is super small. Fancy it's like Applebee's. Yeah. No? <laughs> um, <laughs> I think there's something to be That's about right. That, but it's hard to date here, I imagine. And um, all of these things, like, like everything comes down to a conversation and being open. And what you need to be open about is what you don't have, what you don't do well, and what you kind of, what everybody wants to know that the other person is is cognizant of their financial and other flaws, and that they have goals to improve their situation. And right. that can be their mental health, that can be their bank account, that can be all kinds of things. Those are really attractive qualities no matter what you have. Yeah, I mean, that, that to me is the treasure. I mean, it's got to be an individual that's, like I said, smart, young, ambitious. Well, young is relative, whatever. I'm not going to say anything because I'm going to get my ass in trouble mm-hmm. here in a minute. But it's smart, ambitious. You know, it, they don't have to have a lot of money, but they got to be shooting for something. They got to be going for something. And, Doesn't matter. And that needs to change. This part of the world, and we've recorded a lot of shows and. Beverly Hills and I, I is think, filled with people who made it and now they only care about their tea time. Right. That's tough to date that person too because they're not They motiva- gave up, dog. Yeah, they, they're just they're, like, they're I'm on the done. bench of life. They go eat uh, at the deli and then they go to golf and then they're asleep. And a lot of women are very frustrated with that. Like, why couldn't I have met him during the height of his ambition? Mm-hmm. And he might not have been better then, but that passion for life would have been right. infectious. Ambitious is sexy, man. It, ambition is. is sexy on on, on people, man. They, like, that's what people want. That's what attracts so many people to the entrepreneur game and like all these big dude, dudes that were somebody back in the day, the women to meet them and they're just like, hey, can I pull that out of them? Probably not. Yeah. Maybe in the bedroom, but other than beyond that, probably not. I think, you know, I, I think to be very honest with you, man, like, like for me, I pray every day that I stay ambitious until the day I die. I pray to God that the very last thing that comes out of my mouth is what's next, God, that I'm that ambitious for the very next thing. One of the questions that I like to ask people, and I don't always get the answer that I want, is what time do you get up if you don't have to get up? 6 a.m. Yeah, me too. But it doesn't matter what time I go to sleep. I, I, I want to get, I'm, I'm, I'm ready to go. Up. Me too. Yeah. That means that if, 
if I'm not working, there are other things that I'm excited and passionate about that are getting me out of bed, not because somebody told me I have to. I want that. Right. It's, I want somebody who's like, I want to get the most out of a day, not the most out of a sleep. Right. I mean, it doesn't matter what time I go to sleep, man. I go 9, 12, 1. I'm still getting up at 6 and I'm ready to go. Yesterday, I only got like now, 5 hours. Now, some people are like, fuck you, I got 8 kids. I'm tired. I get that. Fine. You're eight, probably eight, not the girl for me. Right. Eight kids, eight kids <laughs> will drain you, dude. Trust me. I get it. Yeah. But Getting up and getting after it in some, I don't care if you want to go for, just get up and go for a walk or, right. or play with your dog or whatever. Somebody who wants to get out of bed as much as somebody wants to get in bed, those are, that's an underrated attribute it, of yeah, somebody. I think so, man. I, I think that if I was going to look for somebody, that's exactly what I would look for as an individual that's going to do that. I'm out of bed, ready to go. I expect, you know, like reasonably within expectation, you know, but again, Jeff Bezos, right? Jeff Bezos stays in bed till like 11 a.m. He said that's where he gets his best ideas. I'm like, right, but he's babe. awake. Yeah. Is I, he awake? I, I don't know. I didn't go that far into well, Have the you article. seen his girlfriend? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> exactly. Lauren Sanchez. Lauren, I know yeah. Lauren. Lauren gets up though. Yeah. She works out. Yeah. She keeps it together. Yeah, I bet she gets I bet she's like, look, listen, Jeff, look, you gotta go get to the gym. He's like, Yes, ma'am, I'm on it. Right? Yeah, some people are like that. Yeah. Uh, they say Trump, even before he was president, he doesn't come out of his bedroom till 10, 11. Yeah. He's watching TV and reading papers and doing information, but his brain is on. He's, he's got it going. I think he's, you got to turn your brain on. Yeah. yeah. I think I mean, so. That, ambition, I'll be very honest. I think ambition is the most underrated quality in a relationship. It's very, it's very, I, I can't have a conversation with an individual who is not ambitious. I just can't. I mean, I'm just like, oh my God, get me out of here. How can I get out of here? I will even make it up. I'll even pull out my phone, but hey, listen, my daughter just texted me. I got to roll. I'll do whatever it takes to get out of a of, of terrible conversation. I can't imagine being stuck in a relationship where you marry an individual, possibly for other reasons other than ambition and if somebody says what are you ambitious about on the first date you say you that's right <laughs> that's exactly right that's, that's exactly. your worst case scenario. one um mistake that people uh, that most people make that is an easy fix is there what do you have one and then one thing that people can improve that everybody regardless of your socioeconomic status one mistake that everyone one mistake fix? that everybody tends to make when it comes to money and there's oh, one yeah. thing that easy. everybody can do better what easy this the mistake that everybody can fix is thinking small like, like so many people think that they're only worth X amount. And a lot of it comes from like most people, they are, they learned all their money story from the age of eight to 12, like how they spend their money, make their money, save their money, manage their money. All of it is guaranteed for a fact. 99.9% .9 of it is from, they learned it from the age of eight to 12. Most people can fix that. You got to override it. You, they don't think they're worth it. They think that sometimes when they see their parents, their parents work for 30 years to try to make $70,000, whatever that is. And then they're making like a buck 80 over here. They think they've made it. That's the problem is they take their foot off the gas. Or I was talking to a gentleman the other the night at a real estate investing event. He's like, man, I just want to work and impress my kids. I want to get a car. I'm like, bro, if you're going to get a car, you're going to quit at like 350. Like if you want to get a Lamborghini, you're going to quit. So many people set their goals so small I, in their trailer park. I'll be very honest with uh -huh. you. I never knew that I could make $4 million in six years. Never knew that. Right. Uh -huh. But at the end of the day, I knew I had greatness inside me and I'm on this constant pursuit to find out what it is. That's, that's why ambition never dies. It never fades out. So that's the one thing. If I could tell anybody right now, stop thinking small in your relationships. It can always be better. Your relationship with your the person that you're dating or the person that you're married can always be better. Your finance can always be better. It's not the fact that people making $50,000 a year don't want to make $200,000 a year. It's the fact that people making 50 a year don't know how to make $200,000 a year. That's the biggest thing. I guarantee you it comes down to three things. Mindset, skill set, and network. Mm -hmm. That's the first thing I would do. And what was the other side of the question? Um, what it's the, the thinking small. And so what is the one change? I guess it could be the same answer. Is there one thing that people can do to significantly improve their finances? You're a big fan of real estate, right? Yeah. yeah. I'm also a bigger fan of like learning a new skill that, that like sales and marketing. Mm -hmm. I, it, if you look like, like, let's just, let's just, let me just be very, very clear here. Investments don't make you rich. For most people, investments do not make you rich. Now, most people here in Palm Beach, they're like investors. Business, may, building a business will make you rich. So they may build a business around other people's money and turn that into a, a lot business. of inherited money too here. Correct. Yeah, <laughs> that's that's a whole other conversation right there. But at the at the end of the day, investments don't make you rich, and building a business will make you rich. If you look at everybody here down here, most of them, other they didn't inherit it. They got, they got, they're rich because they built a business. Yeah. And that's what a lot of people need to, need to, um, need to think about. The one thing that people can fix, um, that was a question, right? So yeah, I, yeah, yeah. I'm super passionate about this. I think is control what you can control. Like your, phys your physical, control your mental, control your relationships, control what you can control and then not worry about everything else. I mean, God, I, I believe in God personally. I, I think that, I, I think that there's only so much that you can do. And wasting that much mental energy on things that you can't control or worry. Yeah. I, mean, I mean, most anxiety, worry, and stuff you can't control comes from just not knowing. 
Right. And sometimes you're just not meant to know everything. And another thing, if you're in a bad pattern, break the pattern, break gotta, the routine. You have got yeah. to make a change. I am so frustrated with people who do the same thing over and over and over. They don't change their perspective. They don't change their landscape. They don't change their habits. They don't change their motivations. Like just change it. Who knows what will come out of that? Right. I think some of that comes from just awareness. The first step to change is always awareness. Like, okay, I got a problem here. We need to fix it right now. And then yeah. the second step is taking total responsibility. Okay, I'm here in, I'm here in my finances. Yeah. Okay, me and my husband, we're about to file for bankruptcy. I'm here because of me. It's yeah. not because of anybody else. I'm here because of me. That's the second step is to take total responsibility. And then I think the third step is finding somebody, possibly like me if it is money, then to uh, find people that can help you get out of it. Once you accept total responsibility, then you m march your way out of that. Yeah. Somebody yeah. said to me, like you seem to set up all your businesses in affluent communities this is because those people have money and I'm like not for the reason you think it's right. because it expands your dreams you yeah. see the possibilities how did that guy make that you'd be surprised at how that guy made that and right. just being around it really does seep into you yeah I mean if you're around the right people man you're going to be lit and on fire and like dreaming constantly dreaming but bigger yeah. things like oh my god how did you do that you know can I, can I say one little quick story sure here? I met an individual that drives a Mazda and uh, he he's a uh, metal fabricator and uh, I don't want to give too much of this guy's identity away but he invited me up to his condo I met him at the bus stop with my um, my son I was dropping him off and he was dropping his daughter off we were talking about entrepreneurship and he's like look man I don't have time to tell you everything I do but here's my number just text me and I'll and you can come up to my condo and see I'll show you what I do so I go up there and he's got like all these patents on these metal studs, right? And so he looks down in my $110,000 car that I have in the driveway. And he's like, is that your car down there? And I was like, yeah. And he's like, and he literally with his fingers, he's like, you'll get past that. Hmm. And I was just like, <laughs> wow. I was like, you have these patents, man. Like how much, how much did he bring in? And he said, well, each one of them brought me a million dollars a month in. And he's got like 16 for 20 years. Yeah. I was stunned. A stunned dude. He was past that. Oh yeah. He was past. He's like, you'll get past that. And instantly next day I sold my car, sold the car. I know it sounds crazy, yeah. man. I sold the car. Like I had been wanting to sell it, but mm -hmm. I just needed it, man. Like sometimes you need those people in your life and that make you dream bigger, but sometimes they make you see what's really important too. I agree. Yeah. All right. I'm going to let you plug all your shit in a minute, but in the interest of time, yeah. This is your first uh, time on this podcast. We play something called worst date or first date. Now, I know you've been married for a long, long time. Your wife can be included in this. Give us either the worst date you ever went on or the best date you've ever went on. Your choice. Easy. Very easy. Worst date I've ever been on. Okay. Second, I want to call it my second uh, wedding, wedding uh, anniversary. Okay. This is where money, again, came into play. Money's always trying to teach me something, right? We went to Macaroni Grill. It's like a, um, yeah. a semi upscale. It's oh, a little, I know it. It's a little more upscale than Chili's. It's like Carabas. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's, it's above Olive Garden or below Olive Garden? I'd say it's maybe slightly above. Okay. It's like, above. Well, I mean, it's a white table, right? So it's cheesecake. It's not, yeah, it's, yeah, exactly. <laughs> okay. it's, it's, it's about in line it's with good. that. It's good. Props to Macaroni Grill. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was good from what I remember. Yeah. And so uh, we're out there and we go to pay and I give them my debit card. And this is a, this is 2004. So I've been married for like 20 something years. Mm -hmm. And so this is 2004. And I go to pay and they swipe it and they come back. And they're like, your card has been declined. And I'm like... No, no, I couldn't pull up my phone because I had one of those little Nokia's right with with Brick Breaker uh -huh. and the Snake Game on there, and he's like, I was like, go run it again, and he goes to swipe it again. He's like, your card has been declined. How do you want to pay for this? And I'm like, oh shit, this is not good. And I'm looking, I'm like, bro, do you got any cash? And she's like, looking at me like, are you kidding me? This is our second wedding anniversary. <laughs> I thought she was gonna divorce me right there. And I was like, oh God, oh God. And I looked at her and I said, I'm going to have to go to the bank. The bank is like five miles away in, in like no traffic, right? So it's right. going to take me like 10 minutes to get there. You to leave her behind as collateral. Yes. And she just sat there and <laughs> stewed and stewed. And I went to the bank, right? And I withdrew, I want to say it was like a hundred dollars, man. I had like 120 in my savings <laughs> account. I mean, keep in mind, we were super young, right? Yeah. She was like 20 or 21 years old. And I was like 24, mm -hmm. something like that. And so it was just like, oh my God. This is embarrassing. So I get back over there. I hand him the money. He's like, thank you. I didn't leave. I didn't have enough to leave him a tip, bro. Oh, man. Yeah, bro. And we left and she was like, oh, my God. I mean, dude, I, I still get stories about that. But let me tell you, the first like like couple days after that, that's all I could hear. Yeah. Yeah. She was on the phone with the first. Can you believe what just happened? I can't believe. Bah, bah, da, da, da. I'm like, oh, God, I'm never going to live this down. And I steal. That's definitely obviously hands down always, the worst uh, day. Always have some cash in your pocket days, yeah. just in case. Um, that was good. All right. Tell everybody where they can find you, contact you, listen to you, all that stuff. Yeah, for sure. So you can listen to my podcast. It's called Where's My Money with Jason Rash. You can find me on social media. By the way, my name is, last name is spelled R-A-S-H. You can find me on Facebook. You can find me on Instagram. Uh, where am I at? I'm on Twitter. I'm on YouTube. I'm on 
TikTok, and I'll be anywhere else. They beam it. Like any next platform that pops up, I'm going to be there. You cannot escape me, by the way. And you can also find my podcast on iTunes and Spotify. And if you really want to know more about me, just go to jasonrash.com and you can check out some more information about me. Yeah, this was great. That was only a, a fraction of your story. Your story is fascinating. Your wife's story is fascinating. I, uh, I'm inspired by it. I'm motivated by it. And I'm entertained by it, most importantly. I appreciate it's you. Thank, thanks for having me on, man. And thank you. As far as us, as always, like, share, follow. Please review this podcast as well as Where's the Money? Your reviews mean a lot in the podcasting ecosystem. Go to greatlovedebate.com. Tickets are on sale. Our 10th season of our world tour is on sale. It kicks off not too far from here, February 16th at the Boca Black Box Center for the Arts. We've got a really good lineup. It's going to be a really big crowd. Uh, go to bocablackbox.com or greatlovedebate.com for tickets and information to that. Shoot me an email, greatlovedebate at gmail.com. Next week, next episode, our much anticipated, promised listeners edition of the worst cities in America to find love for 2023. This is not my list this time. I'm just going to take the submissions and read them cold. We've already gotten some and some of you are fucking crazy. It is not the city. It is you. You are the problem. You need to be get out of the city because you're ruining it because there's some really great cities on there. You people are nuts, but we're going to do that on the next episode. We got, we'll take some final candidates. Great love debate at gmail.com because as always at the great love debate, we Never stop making love. See you next time.